Welcome to the Big Dream Comics Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, and with me today is the lead writer and artist for Big Dream Comics, Snipe Hunter. Hi, happy to be here. I know you're busy creating the next hot comic, so we appreciate you taking some time out of your hectic schedule. No problem. So our first topic is early influences. What were some of the first titles that got you interested in comics? Well, as a kid, my first experience was probably reading the comics in the newspaper. There was Garfield, Heathcliff, Calvin Hobbes, Peanuts, and of course there was Stan Lee writing Spider-Man. There were these little Archie Comics digests at the grocery store. And then the drugstore had racks of comics, and newsstands had all kinds of comics that I would read while my mom was grocery shopping, but I never really thought of buying them and collecting them. Then I started watching cartoons like G.I. Joe, Transformers, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I really got into G.I. Joe from the cartoon, and sometimes they would run ads on TV for the comic book. And I think G.I. Joe was probably one of the only comics that ever had ads that ran on TV. And for a while, I think G.I. Joe was floating the whole Marvel Comics company. While we're on the subject, I'd like to give a shout out to the artist Hector Garrido, who did the box art for a lot of the G.I. Joe toys the figures and vehicles that really got me excited to collect them. The G.I. Joe comics were written by a guy named Larry Hama, who also wrote The Nom and Nth Man. The G.I. Joe comics seemed a lot more realistic and mature than the cartoon, while still featuring the characters and vehicles that I'd been introduced to and collected. I really liked G.I. Joe, but it did seem to get a little ninja-heavy at times. And, you know, in real life, I don't think they could really dodge a bullet. At the time, I didn't have a lot of funds, so the comics I mainly collected were G.I. Joe, Punisher, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which I guess were less flashy than the superhero comics like X-Men, Spider-Man, Batman, or Superman. My friends and I created a comic book club where we would get together and bring the newest comics and exchange them and so I could still keep up with the adventures of the superheroes while also bringing some different comics to the table. A local comic book store would give us discounts in exchange for some simple advertisements that we drew featuring popular comic book characters. We would also draw our own simple comics, and throughout school I was always doodling and drawing and not paying attention to my classes, and sometimes just drawing to stay awake, so it seems like I've always been drawing for my whole life, whether it was good or not. How about as you got a little older? As a teenager, I was finally able to start making some money, so I started expanding my collections to include titles like Spider-Man, Wolverine, X-Force, or used to be the New Mutants, and the New Warriors. I really liked the title called Marvel Comics Presents because it introduced a whole lot of characters that I hadn't seen before. Then Image Comics started and I was able to get on the ground floor with a lot of titles like Spawn, Youngblood, Max, and Pit. The formation of Image Comics was really exciting because it gave me the idea that even if I'd never make it to the big two of DC or Marvel as a writer and definitely not as an artist that there might be an opportunity with a independent company or even starting my own company. 
What kind of comics did you read as an adult? I took a break from buying comics for a while, but still kept up with news on the internet. And along came this upstart company called Dreamway Productions with this superstar called Pat Lee and his Transformers drawings were just amazing. And shortly after that, there's a revamp or update or continuation of G.I. Joe. So that got me back into the comic stores. Also, as time went by, public libraries started stocking graphic novels. So I was able to catch up on a lot of stories like Fables and Bone and Cross-Gen Comics. I don't know if you've heard about a title called Roos, but it was about a kind of Sherlock Holmes detective that was investigating supernatural crimes. Now, that cross-gen experiment was really interesting because for the first time, comics creators weren't independent contractors. They were employees with salary and benefits and they all kind of collaborated and moved to the Tampa area, I believe, and it was kind of like a regular job, but creating monthly comics. Graphic novels were also becoming more popular at the time, and stores like Barnes and Nobles and Borders Books would have them, so I'd read some and pick up some and so I was able to keep up with a lot of the collected stories of Marvel and DC. What current titles interest you? I really enjoy this book called Monstrous from Marjorie Liu and Sana Takeda. And another one is a manga called Demon Slayer, which I'm sure everybody's heard of. I kind of feel a kinship with the manga creators because... Like them, my comics are in black and white, and they bundle multiple chapters together or have multiple stories in one package to make it affordable. So you get a lot of value, and then later on, maybe you get animated and make some money off of TV or Netflix. With things like webtoons and digital subscriptions, there's never been a lower barrier to entry in the comic book space. Because if you have an idea and the will, you can pretty much share it with the world. But there's also a lot more difficulty in finding an audience. I still think there needs to be some way to attract younger readers either put some comics in the grocery stores or CVS places where they don't have to go to a specialty shop and maybe the answer is to use cheap paper or print them in black and white I don't know but I don't think the way the comic book industry now is set up is sustainable for the future and it would be a shame if by going digital or focusing on movies and TV that we don't continue to bring in younger readers. When I was growing up, a 22-page comic book cost 75 cents so I guess nowadays when you're paying five dollars six dollars for a story that is about the same or not much longer it just seems that we're pricing out maybe some of the uh, middle school or grade school kids who don't really have a whole lot of money to spend I remember when comics like 
X-Men, Spider-Man, and like I said before, the Image expansion. Those comics were selling close to a million issues a month. And now, I think maybe the top-selling comics are, what, 100000 200000 a month? Revenue-wise, maybe it's a wash, but I still think that creators need that monthly income and not just have to wait to get paid for the uh, trade paperback or graphic novel. That's all the time we have for today. I want to again thank our guest, Snipe Hunter, for his time. You're welcome. And I want to thank you, the listener. Remember, you're already in the right place for fresh and innovative stories. Big Dream Comics on YouTube. See you next time!